did you know you could run Windows 11 from a USB stick? So this is currently running from a USB to NVMe adapter because it's faster, but I'm going to do an installation to this Samsung bar, which is a pretty inexpensive USB stick, 64 gig. So first up, we're going to need a copy of Windows 11. So let's open the browser and do a search for Windows 11 ISO. And you see this is an official Microsoft link download Windows 11. And we want download Windows 11 disk image ISO. Now this definitely works best for x64 or x86 devices. ARM devices, it's a little more sketchy. So we'll pick Windows 11 and confirm. Pick your language and confirm and download. And I'm going to save that on the desktop for the purpose of this video. And while it's doing that, let's do a search for Rufus. Rufus.ie. And we'll consent to that and download. And we'll pick the top one here, standard. And we'll also download that onto the desktop. And we'll come back when Windows is finished downloading. I can plug in my USB stick. Now while that's all happening, let's talk about different options. So I've used a USB stick, the Samsung bar that you saw earlier on. This Oracle drive is way faster. So much faster random write speeds uh, and read speeds, which means it's much better for an operating system. This one is as well. So more premium USB sticks, both of those are 512 gig. I've also got this little USB SSD drive, which is really handy for use with my phone from Afro. That would also work. But I've generally used an NVMe drive because they're faster, and I already had uh, an NVMe caddy. These are pretty cheap, this Orico one, and the speed is definitely reasonable on it. There's also something like this, which is a dock. So this has loads of different inputs but also a magnetic top and an NVMe slot. So we can use that in exactly the same way. These two drives are pretty much the same speed. Now this is a really high-end USB 4, which opens up like this. Uh, again, it's a, an NVMe drive. I love this, it's incredibly fast, but devices don't boot from it. So USB 4 to uh, boot just doesn't seem to be supported at all. It even has its own inbuilt cable. It's a great device and it would be a lot faster, but unfortunately it doesn't work. So I'm using USB 3 devices. So my downloads have all finished. So we can close the browser and you can see we've got Windows here. Let's see how big that is. So 7.2 gig. And we've got Rufus here. So let's install that. And yes, I'm going to say no to updates because I've just downloaded it. And you can see it's already picked up my USB stick, Samsung flash drive. So let's pick the ISO with select. And ours is on the desktop. So open. And then we need to pick under image option, Windows to go. And we'll hit start. What version we're using. So in this case, I'm going to use Windows 11 Pro. And OK. And you can do some customization. I'm not going to prevent Windows from accessing internal disks. I am going to remove the requirement for an online Microsoft account. I'll create a local account, set regional options, because I always use the same. And also we're going to skip the privacy questions. So we'll say OK. And it's warning that it will wipe everything on the drive. OK. And we'll let it do its thing. And we're going to try it on multiple devices. And I'm going to do some speed tests as well but you are better to stick to the one device that you installed it on because it sorts out all the drivers and everything, so it'll be more compatible. But you can use it on different architecture, which I'll show later on in the video. Okay, so when it's finished, it says ready on here. So let's close that down and we'll shut down Windows. So let's unplug the USB stick and pop it in here. This cable's just power. So now I can switch on and I need to tap F7. And I can see that the Samsung flash drive is showing up as well as the Windows and Ubuntu that's on the internal drive. So I'm gonna pick the Samsung drive and it starts up Windows from the USB stick. There you go, getting devices ready. It always takes longer the first couple of times, 
needs a few restarts. So it's just done a restart. Okay, nearly there. And we get our normal start up for Windows, but it's going to ask us less questions. And it doesn't recognize the Wi-Fi on this one. So I'm going to plug in an Ethernet connection. I'll move over to my other desk. So I've plugged in a USB Ethernet adapter and it's found an internet connection. If we just test that. So we go BBC Sport. So if we scroll through, you can see that's working. Now, if I download Crystal Disk Mark and see what sort of speeds we're getting. So I've just taken a photo of these results. So let's go over to another laptop. This is the huge 18 and a half inch Trevik laptop. And interestingly, the Wi-Fi worked on this. Um, so same process, uh, but I installed it onto this. But obviously the Wi-Fi drivers on this must be more compatible. But if we go into my pictures folder, I did a load of speed tests. So I need to find so the Chewy 13 inch tablet with USB-C. Yeah, a lot faster. We've got 227 versus 455 from the NVMe drive. The, both of these speed tests were done on the Chewy 13 inch laptop, so the one I've been using for most of this video. Uh, we had 125 versus 403, so that was way slower. Uh, then 117 versus 838, and then we dropped right down to 116 compared to 1867. And the right speeds paint the similar port, well, much worse, look, 10.69 compared to 436.04. So there's no doubt about it, the NVMe drive is a lot faster. I did find as well though, that the NVMe drive on this laptop was considerably slower than the Chewy one. So if I go back, one of these results, yeah, so the Trevik laptop, just, we'll just take the top two, 40.04 compared to 455.75. So that's this drive, but on this laptop. So the USB sockets were definitely performing a lot slower. And I actually installed this on this device. So this was the first device I used with the Windows to go system. But the Wi-Fi works, whereas the Wi-Fi doesn't work on the Chewy. So you do get mixed results, but let's try that USB stick in this laptop. So if I shut this down, unplug the NVMe drive and plug in the USB stick. So now if we boot up and F7 and then Samsung flash drive. Okay, so the trackpad doesn't work. So I'll plug in a mouse. And it's obviously just driver issues. I can rectify that by installing the trackpad drivers, but I'm gonna use it on different devices anyway. So let's try the Wi-Fi. Yeah, Wi-Fi is available on this lap. So on the other one, it didn't pick it up. But with this one, I can log into my Wi-Fi. And obviously, this wouldn't be intended to move between lots of different devices, but I'm just showing that it works somewhat. So that's connected. So now if I launch the browser, and we go for Hot UK Deals. Yeah, I think that was okay. I think I'm gonna install Steam, because I'm interested to know if it'll run games from the USB stick. So let's install that. It definitely feels slower, and I picked the device with the slowest USB out of the two. Okay, that's installing now, and updating. So this PC has an N150 processor and 16 gig of RAM. The other smaller one that I was using, which is this Chewy one, is an N100 with 12 gig of RAM. But it definitely had a faster USB, it's running Linux at the moment, so this is Ubuntu with KDE Plasma. So I'm logged into Steam successfully. Let's try a bit of Dirt Rally. So install that. Oh, actually, 38.8 gig. No, I'm not going to do that. That's going to take ages. And there's not enough room on the stick. Let's go with Flat Out 2, which is 3 gig. Install. So it's downloaded. Let's hit play and see if it launches. So play flat out too. Let's just go straight into it without any configuration. Okay, so the sound works fine. Remember this was initially installed on the Chewy laptop, which is a different laptop. Let's just go into a quick race. Yeah, it seems to be working all right. It's not great playing it with keyboards, but that's definitely working. Doesn't seem sluggish. Oh, 
It's nice. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely working. Right, we need to try on something else now. So let's shut this down. Unplug this. So pop the USB stick in and we need to shut down this Linux system. Then reboot, tapping F7. And we can see the Samsung drivers on there on the top. So we're back in on the Chewy. Not sure if it's gonna let me do this without an internet connection. Let's give it a go. So flat out two. Sound is working the same on this one. Okay, yeah, that also seems absolutely fine. No worries with that. And I haven't had any crashes or anything on this or any errors show up, apart from Steam saying it wanted Wi-Fi. Oh, oh, oh dear. So let's try another system. Okay, so let's grab that. And we'll pop it into something completely different. So this Chewy is an AMD processor. I think it's still F7. Uh, not the monitor I was expecting. That's better, that's where I wanted it to be. So once again, pick the Samsung flash drive and it launches. Getting devices ready has come up. So yeah, 50% which it didn't do going between the Trevik laptop, the big one, and the Chewy, the little laptop. And we're in. And I've got an internet connection. I guess that's why it's showing the image in the background, but this is the same system as you can see. So I've tap the Windows key and type about, just to show you what this mini PC is. No GPU installed, so that's definitely a sign that it hasn't picked up the Radeon graphics which obviously I can do, I can install that as drivers. And this is only because I'm switching between devices, but as you can see, AMD Ryzen 5 6600H with Radeon graphics, 16 gig of RAM. Storage is interesting, 477 gig. So is that because I ticked that option for, to be able to see the operating system's drives? Yeah, so it shows the main drive being on the USB stick. And then the D drive, is that accessible? Yeah, users, Lee, ah, haven't got permission, but then it lets me in anyway. Hey, and there's all the downloads that are on. So that's on the NVMe drive. Interesting. And this won't be activated. So if I go into activation, Oh, okay, it is. <laughs> the other one wasn't activated. I don't know how that's activated, but it is. So the NVMe drive I've been using says it's not activated. So what that means, what I was trying to do, if I plug in the NVMe drive, I've got an image on there. So this is the other one. Users, Lee, I think it's in pictures. Yeah, I wanted this as my background for the Windows to go. So is that going to let me copy that to the local pictures folder? And then if this is activated, this should let me personalize the desktop. Background, browse photos. Yeah, it wouldn't let me go this far on the other system because it didn't think it was activated, but for some reason this thinks it is activated. And Windows works funny in the way that it recognizes hardware it's been activated on before. So it must be something to do with that, but I'm not sure why it worked on this one and didn't on the other. But there I've got my little Windows to go logo and I've got my Bliss style wallpaper on there as well. So let's try the game. We haven't got proper GPU support. We could run Windows Update to add the GPU support. And I don't know if that means it's less compatible being able to switch between operating systems, but let's just give it a try anyway. As you can see, the internet's working, and I'm not sure if it picks up the Wi-Fi in this. Bluetooth, yeah, it doesn't see the Wi-Fi. Okay, so the sound's definitely working on that, a bit too loud. Let's do another single race for let's pick somewhere else this time. 
Okay, this is struggling more. Yeah, this really doesn't like it. So my desktop's definitely at a higher resolution. So if I go back to Windows Desktop, I reckon it was about 720 on the 13 inch. Oh, so it doesn't let me change the display resolution. Yeah, this will be all down to the graphics. So this is definitely showing that you can't necessarily switch between Intel and AMD, at least for gaming. But let's see what the browser works like and just see how it works for that. Yeah, so that that's actually pretty snappy. This is remember this is running from the USB stick. So let's try YouTube. And I'm leaving this bit in real time, or oh, this bit's a bit slower. But it's still not bad. Still usable. I've used much slower computers. Took a while to save the choice then on that. Right, so let's try Lee PSP video HDR and just play a bit of a a video, a demo. Here we are, this one here. So it's playing the advert, no problem at all. And it's playing that. It feels all right. It feels snappy. So let's go up to 1440. Still all right at 1440. Not dropping any frames. We've got to go right up to 4K. And it just went straight into it. So perfectly usable web browser. There's going to be lots of things that are usable. Yeah, even while it's playing that video, look, it's not having any trouble doing that. If I click on one of these stories, it's in there straight away. That's very impressive. Okay, so we have Windows 11 to go and kind of Steam to go, as long as you're using it on similar architecture. Hopefully this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.